Today I'm going to make $200 by not spending $200. The other day I went to use my grapple and found that the switch to engage the third function valve was not lighting up, was not working. I pulled on the wires on the bottom of the switch just to see if anything was loose and the whole bottom assembly of this switch came apart. So I have a local Kubota dealer and I thought let me run down there and see what it would cost to replace this little switch for the third function valve. Well, Kubota only sells the switch and the wiring harness attached to it for $186 plus tax. I like to support local dealers. I like to support manufacturing, but I don't think the little switch and the wires are worth $186, at least not to me. So I thought, let me look and see if I can figure out a way to make this work, either use a different switch or at best, why don't we just take those two wires, should be just two wires, to engage the switch and leave the third function turned on. I don't think that hurts at all because half the time when I have the bucket on or the pallet forks, I look down and I see that little green light on because I've hit the third function switch and turned it on. So clearly it doesn't matter if it's left on. So at least for now, why don't we get it working and then we'll see what's in there. Let's take a closer look. So looking at the guts of this switch, there are four wires here. There is a solid black wire, a solid yellow wire, a yellow wire with a red stripe, and a red wire with a black stripe. So one of these is ground, one of them is probably power which goes to the light, and then the other two are just for the switch, basically to uh, break the electricity between the switch. Now, as I look closer, there's not much to this. So let me show you what I see here. I've got this little pick tool. I'm using my phone for an extreme close-up so you can see what I'm seeing here. The switch, it's a little micro switch. It's tiny. But if you look here, there is the contact point. So that is disengaged. And then when you press the button, that's engaged. So disengaged, engaged. It's just that simple. So. I've got a couple wires here. I can trace them out. The yellow wire with the black, or the yellow wire with the red stripe goes up to this contact point. The red wire with the black stripe goes to this contact point. So those are my two wires. And if I just short them out together, that will engage the switch. The other wires, one would be the negative, assuming the uh, black wire would be negative, and then the solid yellow would just be power for the light. We're not going to do anything with that. We'll just ignore that. So these two wires here, if I just put a regular switch, I would just short those two wires out or twist them together. Now, I don't know if behind this shrink wrap is a soldered connection or if it's just plugged in. So I'm going to cut that off and see what's back there. Okay, so the wires are soldered on, which is why they sell the switch as an assembly, I suppose, but they don't just unplug. No big deal. We can either cut them, could unsolder them, but I think I'll just, again, cut away the shrink wrap, shrink tubing. Yeah. And then we'll just snip those two wires and I think twist them together. Now what I don't know is how you would get the switch out of the switch case here because if it is screwed in from underneath, you know, if it just has like a nut that holds it in place, that's about three quarters of an inch deep and you really can't get in there. And if it had wires attached to it, that would be even tougher yet. So I'm not sure how that would come apart. It's something I could tear into at some point, but I'm gonna leave that switch where it is for now and just work on seeing if we can jump these two wires. I've got these nice cutting pliers. Some people pronounce the K and call them Knipex or just Nipex. Made in Germany. Really nice. Took me a long time to treat myself to a good tool, but 
these are nice. If you're interested, I'll leave a link in the description and you can check them out yourself. Let's just cut this off. We're going to cut off the red wire with the black, the yellow wire with the red stripe. And then we'll strip those back. Can I do it with my finger? Yes, here we go. All right. All right, I'm just gonna strip these back about a quarter of an inch, maybe a little bit less. And yeah, about a quarter of an inch. And what I have here is just a crimp on connector, much like a wire nut. You just twist the wires together a little bit, slide that over, and then use my crimping tool to crimp them together. That should do it. Now when I turn my key on, I can hear the solenoid for the uh, third function clicking in there. So it should work. We'll try out the grapple. First, I'm just gonna wrap some electrical tape around this old connection. And uh, I don't wanna have that power that's powering the LED light short out on anything. So if I just tape it together and leave it under there, I think that'll work out pretty well. It doesn't have to be super pretty because maybe we'll come back. Maybe we'll come back and put an actual switch in there. Meanwhile, I'll just tuck that back up under there like that. And I think that'll just stay out of the way. All right, let's, uh, let's try out the grapple. Well, there we go. You could consider that a temporary fix or that could probably remain a permanent fix. It's just a matter of if you, if you want to be able to turn off that third function valve. Personally, like I said, I don't see the problem in just leaving it engaged all the time. Uh, would it be nice to put a switch in there? Maybe. Maybe I will or maybe I'll leave it just like it is. Anyway, there's a $200 fix saved. We're back in business and remember if this were to happen on a weekend or Sunday afternoon and there's no Kubota dealer around and you want to get some work done, you may not have a choice but to kind of make this work. Not to mention that my dealer didn't even have the parts in stock, so I would have had to wait for them to be ordered. So I'm happy with that. Again, call it a temporary fix. Call it whatever you want, but I call it success and it's working. Thanks for watching. I appreciate you being here today. If you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up. If you've not yet subscribed to the channel, I invite you to join us. And as always, I look forward to seeing you next time.